the best calendaring tool for lawyers, which tool should you use to schedule meetings with your prospects and your clients, how to set it up, and how to make sure you get the most bookings from your prospects and clients. Hi, Legal Funnel family. Hope you're doing well. Let's go to the intro. All right. So in Legal Funnel, we help lawyers get more clients and automate their law firm. And a big integral part of that is to get scheduled bookings, scheduled meetings from our prospects, people that are looking to talk to us or talk to our team to get them hopefully signed up to be our clients. Or if you have to schedule meetings with your clients, what tool do you use? Um, and what are some optimizations or little settings that you can set up to make sure you get the most bookings or to increase the chances of people to actually book a time with you? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pass it on to the clip. This is a little glimpse of what our legal funnel program looks like. It's where I teach how to set up Canonly, the best calendaring tool for lawyers. I've, t I've been and tested out a bunch of different scheduling tools in the past, and I know hands down that Canonly is the best for this. And the reason why Canonly works really well is because Calendly is the most popular tool for scheduling. And because it's very popular, people that see it know exactly what to do. They're very likely to be able to follow, follow through. But however, there's some special settings that you need to be mindful of um, that when you're setting up your Calendly account, make sure you have these very specific settings to, again, to increase your chances of getting more clients for your law firm. Okay, so again, I don't want you just watching these videos. As, I'm, as, as you'll be watching the clip right now in, in, in about 30 seconds, please open up Calendly and follow along and make sure that these settings have been are set up for your event in Calendly, okay? So please, again, just take this moment, open up Calendly, and let's go to the clip, okay? Just follow along. All the different scheduling tools, Calendly is the best. I ex experimented with this back in the day. Why is it the best? Because it's the most popular. Because it's the most popular, people know what to do with it. They don't overthink it. They just, they just do it. Um, so ideally get on Calendly. If you already have something that's already working for you, stick to it. It's not a big deal. All right. So let's start off with, I'm going to do a little quick, little going down, um, try to take notes quickly. Yeah. If you can quickly implement, right. As I'm telling you, but I'm going to try to go through it pretty fast. Event name, keep it very simple, straight to the point. If it's a free consultation, put free in capital letters. It's a buzzword, it's a, it's a power word, whatever you want to call it. It makes people want to take the meeting more likely, you know, make it more likely for people to take on, take on the calls. And it should give a context to what, what the call is for. Not, don't just say free call, say free immigration consultation, let's just say, or whatever, and give it context. Um, a little copywriting skill, better than telling people what to do. Tell people what not, not to do, it's a little bit stronger. Don't leave until you've done this, okay? It's like telling a baby, don't do this. That's a lot more impactful than do this. Little psychology. So don't leave until you booked your call to your one-liner, your benefits without the pain point, essentially. Your link, sh short link. Everybody should be on using Zoom for meetings. Your Zoom meetings are more likely to be turned into clients. So always use Zoom for your meetings. And it should, um, uh, it should be everybody should have their Zoom accounts integrated into Calendly, so that automatically it's only Zoom meetings. Okay, Zoom meetings always you're more likely to sign up as clients when they're on Zoom. What else? Um, your date range of how 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 many days in that you show um, the dates that are available for booking. Don't don't put two months. Ideally, you want it to be a short distance into the future which increases your show up rates. You don't want somebody to book a time with you in 14 weeks or in 14 days. Uh, that makes them less likely to show up. So try to, it's, you know, sometimes I play with three days. Right now we're playing with around seven days. It seems like it's working out well. Seven days, one week. If you need to talk to me, book a time with me this week. Duration, max 30 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, but max 30 minutes. Make it short meetings. If it needs to be a longer meeting, then break it into like a discovery call meeting and then have a longer, more thorough conversation kind of meeting. But for the, for the sake of your first meeting, sure as short as possible. Discovery call, usually, you know, whatever you call it also sometimes helps with conversions, discovery, case review, things like that. Be mindful of that. Everybody um, usually has their hours. Be mindful 
of when you're more like more likely to get booking uh, more likely for your clients to book make sure you have people during those hours obviously for us we have international clients so we're very mindful of that we make sure that we have somebody that takes on those hours show your start time depending on what your increments are so if your meetings are every 20 minutes then i would show the increments in within 20 minutes since our meetings in 30 minutes show increments in 30 minutes and don't allow people to book so so soon let's say somebody wants to book a call they can only book a call between two hours that way it doesn't catch our team off guard obviously time zone automatically should be detected and save and close your questions click on the setting obviously autofill should be checked on but the allow invitees to add additional guests should be checked off nobody really uses that i don't know why calendly put leaves that on um, by default you just want to make it simple don't allow people to add anybody else has worked pretty well for us ideally your first question should be a relatively easy open-ended question you know what's the reason for our call um i'm just going to go through our questions if it helps you however way it helps you create your own feel free to use it for us briefly describe your business a little open-ended kind of question and now these are like sales questions these are questions that helps our people that are taking on the calls to be more likely to sign up clients so what's your biggest problem you're facing without a u.s business is to get into the meat of the reason why they're there and if you know the specific reason why they're there you're more likely to close them because you can address those specific pain points it's a very good question to ask what's your biggest problem with without this what's your biggest reason why you need this okay very good sales question to ask if you're in a field like immigration or estate planning or things like that, where you get a bunch of information seekers or people that waste your time, then you can ask very direct questions. Hey, how much are you looking? Are you looking to hire a lawyer for this? How much are you looking to invest in doing this? Things like that. Ask those very direct questions and, and this really helps you. There's nothing wrong with asking a direct question like this. Just ask it. Um, and it helps you, it helps your team. Over time, hopefully you get a lot of bookings. You could actually be selective. Actually, um, yesterday I was training somebody I told them it's totally okay to cancel meetings based on who they are, how they answer things, and what countries that they're booking from. Uh, I want you to just focus your time on the, on the good leads. Um, cancel meetings if you need to based on their answers. Another good sales question is if you qualify, how soon are you looking to start? This is the shows the urgency and immediacy behind them being there. It brings it top of mind for them. It also shows to you how serious they are. It's a good sales question. And then a kind of thing that I recommend, it's a pretty cool trick that I learned a couple of years ago, is if you want to increase your show up rates, you know, five to ten percent or so, add this cool question. I promise a hundred percent commitment to attend my call. They check off, it's a kind of micro commitment for them. Yes, I'm hundred percent to attend my call. It helps increase your show up rates by a little bit. And then if there's anything else that like maybe as you're have the sales conversations, if there's any particular thing that maybe they need to do or be mindful of, let's just say one of us is, for, for us, it was, it was actually more relevant two years ago. I and mean, we added this, a lot of people didn't know it was a Zoom meeting, so we added this. I probably should remove this now because I think everybody at this point, it's very clear it's a Zoom meeting. So you add that. And the last thing I would do is just ask a phone number. I would probably leave the phone number last, ask more private questions later, but it's okay to have the name and email up front, but the phone number last because I already have automation set up. I don't want to move things around or delete things. I'm just going to leave it as is. Any questions about these kinds of questions? Uh, can we use Google Meets? Please, Shannon, do not use Google Meets. It's horrible. <laughs> just use Zoom. Um, it's annoying. It's, very, it's not as good. It's annoying. People don't know how to use it. It's annoying for your team. It's annoying for people who use it. Just get on Zoom. It's so much better. Um, always, Car uh, Carson says, always tell your kids what to do and not what, what not to do. Please walk off. No, don't run. Sorry, can't help it. <laughs> uh, free discovery call with staff can qualify them and then lead to a paid case strategy call with the attorney. Yes, perfect, Carson. That's the best way to think about that. Um, how do you do this when your team is doing the scheduling versus the potential new clients? Um, same thing. Your, your team is getting these questions answered on the phone. Hey, tell me your name. Your email and then they ask these questions that's basically what me and donia was were sharing early on is you get those intake filled out for them our vas go call up all of our leads 
contact form submissions, basically our leads that are submitted to us and get the form filled out. So same thing for this. Then it says, we love me, it's clients use it better than, okay, that's fine. If it's working for you, Shannon, stick to it. Um, next is notification and cancellation policy. Let's go there. You wanna make sure all of these are set up and personalized, okay? So email confirmation, you wanna, you wanna personalize it, okay? Confirmed, big, bold, brackets, your call with us. And this is copywriting skills, copywriting things that you, um, you can add. Actually, I have a template, all these things I remember. Yeah, there we go. Canly notification templates, I'm gonna put it into the chat. All these things that I share with you, Actually, I already have a template for it. So email confirmations, um, email cancellations, email reminders. All the templates are here for you. It's based on what, what we have internally. It's basically, it's personalized. That's the important part. It's very obvious um, where they're going to be attending the call. And then this is kind of like my nurturing, part of the nurturing and go look at my reviews kind of process because they're like, they don't know me that much. So here's three promises that I'll do. So we already know from our clients, these are things that matter to them most. So we address that upfront. And then we give them clarity. Again, this is your appointment details. And then also this is kind of like a middle of the funnel, more complex uh, kind of things. Once you understand funnels, like, hey, these things could help people that are potentially looking to hire me. These things could help them. So this is essentially goes back to it could go back to the middle of your, you could show them another video, basically. It's a funnel stage. Uh, kind of, it could explain the service. So maybe that they, they get more clarity on what you do or how you help your clients. And then I also have a ClickFunnels page made, made for FAQ. So all the questions that I know my clients ask and put into a ClickFunnels page, just answer the questions and I have call to actions throughout it. That basically leads to our order form, essentially. And then also another one is, I need to update this, is this is when I had 2,000 Google reviews, now we're actually at 3,000 or so, um, is just links out to our Google reviews. Um, so I basically took the top three best content that I could think of, a page with a video, a page with our FAQ and our reviews. And I, once they're in, inside my funnel, now I'm showing them these things. And I don't expect you guys to set this up right now, but just know that you guys have, you guys have the template, things like that. Maybe in the future, um, schedule it out. Maybe two months into the future, set this up for yourself. Um, these are conversion things. It's not like make it or break it, but it does help, help you send up more clients. Uh, email cancellation. I showed a template with you. Hey, you're, that's a little bit customized. Um, email reminders is essentially the same thing that I just shared with you. Just a little bit more um specifically to get them to actually show up and then uh oh yeah the other thing is this email reminders is sent 24 hours before one day before and one hour before set up two notifications not more than that not less than that but just enough um and then email follow-up is any emails that get sent to them after the call it's pretty cool so that's where you can show them more reviews answer the questions etc which is what we do And then text reminders, which is also part of the template that I share with you, is a little bit more personalized. It's a little bit less, makes more sense. Hi, John. Um, John, uh, Bob here from Malayla. Please check your email for the Zoom link for our meeting together. I look forward to talking to you on this time and on this date. Uh, Jamie, yes, I have the chat saved. Just ask for, me, ask, uh, uh, ask for it in Slack and I'll send it to you. Um, all the links also are, all the links are always emailed to you also right after the call and right after our office hours. Cancellation policy, we basically say, hey, we don't offer cancellations, rescheduling. We try to lessen the number of, we're like kind of strict with that. I think it decreases the number of cancellations. So we'd have a strict cancellation policy. And that's that. Um, you could also create like extra text or extra things. I think it looks like we have one extra email reminder, I guess, 10 minutes before. Um, you could be able to create those in workflows, extra text or extra emails that's done in workflows. 
And then the confirmation page, this is important. Once you get your subdomain set up and once you have your, um, uh, I could show you maybe not today, but to get the URL for your funnels. Basically, this is the thank you page. After the book a call, there's, this is where you set up so it redirects automatically to your thank you page. All right, so that was it. That's how you set it up. Um,